The following is an Auburn Network production. In 1997, the Auburn Tigers set out to make a statement. Again, retreats the throw off the play fake. Sets up with time, fires the pass over the middle. Bailey's got it. He breaks away at the 45, 50. He's at the 40. The court's the 30, the 20. He's in the foot race to the 10, the 5. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! They served notice that this team would not back down, give in, or accept anything less than a victory. We can't get him get no more, dog. No more. <laughs> They were determined to once again take their rightful place as one of the elite teams of the Southeastern Conference. Craig, under center this time, is back to throw. Got a wide open man, Beasley inside the 10 to the 5. He dives, he's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Led by a dedicated group of seniors, this team would expect nothing less than all-out effort. They lived by the motto, whatever is necessary. The Tigers would not be denied. There's the snap, the spot, kick is away. Long enough, high enough, kick. Good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! Home from 39 yards! It's good! It's good! A mob scene! When the dust cleared, the 1997 Auburn Tigers were champions of the SEC West. Champions once more. As champions of the SEC West, the Tigers would travel to Atlanta to meet third-ranked Tennessee in the SEC championship game. The right to play for the championship of the toughest football conference in America is quite an achievement, an opportunity these Tigers had earned an honor they deserve. The game was filled with great plays and splendid turnarounds. Here's the snap to Craig. He play fakes. He sets up. Forced out of the pocket, but he's going to throw long down the middle of the field for Goodson. Goodson. Oh, a miracle catch inside the five. He scores. Touchdown, Auburn! Quarterback Damian Craig and the Auburn offense electrify the Georgia Dome. The Tigers fought like champions, making big plays on both sides of the ball. But after holding the lead for most of the game, in the end, one point would separate the Tigers from the Southeastern Conference crown. The year began with much promise and high expectations as the Tigers opened on the road at Virginia. This would not be an easy opener as the Cavaliers traditionally rank in the upper echelon of the ACC. They quickly showed why. As Virginia attempted to add to its lead, the Tigers showed evidence for the first time that they would knock back down from a challenge. Brad Ware's fumble recovery stopped Virginia's surge and gave the Auburn offense a big spark. Beginning from the two-yard line, senior quarterback Damian Craig moved the offense 98 yards to take the lead and control of the football game. Craig was not finished yet. He teamed with Karsten Bailey to light up the night sky in Charlottesville with touchdown strikes of 57 and 77 yards. Tiger defense harassed the Cavaliers all night long. And 
when it appeared Virginia might have a chance to get back into the game, it slammed the door for good. The Tigers had won their opener on the road, showing the kind of mental toughness it would take to prevail in the battles to come in the SEC. All I can say is I'm proud. I saw a lot of great things out today. I saw early adversity, putting the worst situation out there. In offense, you, you kept trying, you kept pulling, you kept pulling, but defense, you kept us in that ball game. And everybody trying to find something to do. And I'm going to tell you, we proved something right there, because people were ready for us to lay down at the end. They're ready for us to quit at the end. It ain't going to happen ever again. Okay. We're going to get them all the way. Yeah, That's a great win. Let's get home and have some, a couple of days off. I think, I think the defense did a good job, but we still, got, we still got a long way to go. We made a lot of mistakes out of that we supposed to, that we ain't supposed to make, but we know we'll take the win and we'll run with it. The challenge that loomed in week two was just as formidable as the one in the season opener. The Tigers faced an improved Ole Miss team that would be in the hunt for the SEC Western Division title all season long. The Rebels frustrated Auburn for nearly three quarters of the game. But the Tigers were undaunted and roared back to score 16 points in the game's final 17 minutes. Craig with the play clock running down out of the eye formation. He's going to throw. Goodson has it inside the five. He's in there. Touchdown, Auburn! On defense, junior Ryan Taylor, in his first season starting at linebacker, showed his nose for the football for the second straight week. While the 19-9 victory wasn't artistic, the Tigers came away from their first SEC battle of the year unscathed, with the LSU Tigers firmly in their sights. To beat the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge, Auburn would need another stellar performance from its defense. It had already shown its big play capability, and it was obviously a much more mature group from a year ago. Leading this group was Team 105, linebackers Takeo Spikes and Ricky Neal. Together, they would combine for 235 tackles in 1997 and drive opposing offensive coordinators absolutely crazy. Back to throw Rattay, they're blitzing, he throws, it's intercepted by Spikes at the 40, Spikes at the 45, he's at midfield, he's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20, Takeo Spikes at the 10, the 5, he's gone, touchdown, Auburn! Up front, the pressure applied by Jimmy Brumball, Leonardo Carson, and Charles Dorsey was capable of destroying any opponent's game plan. Their unrelenting pressure often paid dividends in the form of big plays in the secondary. Without a senior in the group, the defensive backs played with maturity beyond their years and made quarterbacks pay for their mistakes. When the Auburn Tigers walked into Death Valley on September 20th, no one had to remind these young men about the importance of the game they were about to play. They were solidly focused on the task at hand. Auburn wasted little time in asserting its quick strike capability. Six plays after receiving the opening kickoff, Damian Craig and the Auburn offense was knocking on the door. Craig, under center this time, is back to throw, got a wide open man, Beasley inside the 10 to the 5, he dives, he's in, touchdown Auburn! 20 
26 yards. Craig to a wide open Fred Beasley at the eight yard line. And he dived in off the far sideline over the pylon and Auburn's on top. While Auburn fans rejoiced, the quick Beasley touchdown shocked the LSU faithful and might have rattled Herb Tyler and the LSU offense. On each of the next two LSU possessions, the Auburn defense flexed its muscle. Interceptions by Takeo Spikes and Antoine Nolan were creating a lot of noise in Death Valley, but it was all coming from the Auburn end. As the offense looked to cash in on the defensive heroics, Damian Craig looked for the sure hands of Hicks Poor. He took the pass to the LSU 24, setting up another Craig touchdown strike. Here comes the blitz. Craig takes the deep snap in the shotgun. Will he run? No, he'll pump fake and he'll throw to Poor. He's got it at the five, breaking a tackle. Down he goes at the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! While he didn't possess the speed of Tyrone Goodson or Karsten Bailey, Senior Hicks Poor was emerging as a third big play receiver in this Auburn offense. The second quarter turned into an offensive shootout. By halftime, the teams were deadlocked at 21 all, setting the stage for a second half that was destined to be a classic. In the third quarter, both defenses asserted themselves. The only Auburn scoring came off the foot of Jarrett Holmes. Although LSU led 28 to 24 to begin the fourth quarter, neither team could deliver a knockout punch. Not only was Auburn faced with stopping LSU's offense, but also with exercising the ghost that seemed to haunt this place called Death Valley. With just over three minutes remaining, Auburn began a do or die drive towards the LSU goal. And Auburn fans simply had to have faith. Beasley the fullback, Williams the tailback. It's gonna be Williams, Williams slices in there, spins. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Auburn! The Auburn Tigers had done it. They defeated LSU at Death Valley, one of the most difficult challenges in all of college football. The nation now had to believe that these Auburn Tigers were for real. Hey, that wasn't about coaching tonight. That wasn't about us coaches. We did everything we could to screw the things up. It's about a bunch of young fellas with hearts that big. It's about men that fight and don't want to quit. Coaches will just mess it up half the time. That was uh, that. That'll be go down now, man. It's one of the. That's a biggie. That's one of those that you'll always remember. But hey, that and only last day. I tell you what kind of team we got, man. We got to have one of those every week. We got to have one of those every week. We've had three. Let's just keep on going. Let's back to the prayer. Against Central Florida, the Tigers showed the maturity of a veteran team. They were not about to give away everything they had gained the week before at LSU. Damian Craig proved to be simply too much for the UCF defense as he completed 27 of 40 passes for 360 yards and two touchdowns. Craig fakes. Rolls out, wants to throw in the end zone. He's got his man tied in to Kevin McLeod. Touchdown, Auburn! The Tigers' leading rusher, Rusty Williams, also found the end zone this night as the Tigers roll to a 41-14 victory, extending their record to 4-0. The following week, Auburn fans did their best to make the players feel right at home as they traveled to South Carolina for an important SEC test. The Tigers' game plan was to take control of the contest early. Two 
wide outs to the left. Shotgun formation for Craig. Takes the deep snap. Damian looking, going to go for broke in the end zone. Bailey's out there. Bailey's got it. Touchdown, Auburn! Karsten Bailey for 37 yards and a score as Craig got it to Bailey over the outstretched arms of defensive back Kevin Brooks. The fireworks on offense were complemented perfectly by the relentless pursuit of Auburn's defense. It bottled up the Gamecocks all day long, limiting them to just 198 yards of total offense. Here's a play fake, fake the end around. Wright's in trouble, Wright is hit, Wright goes down, lost the football, it's loose, Auburn may have come up with it. Yes, they did! Auburn has recovered the fumble. Ricky Neal came in, picked up the loose football, and the Tigers have turned it over again. Early in the second half, the Tigers mounted an 85-yard drive that not only resulted in seven points, but ripped the heart out of the Gamecocks defense. Locker is Pennington, Craig taking the snap, gonna fire. Over the middle it is Goodson, Goodson at the five. He spins and dives into the end zone. He's in there, touchdown Auburn! And it would be another 300 yard plus passing performance for Damian Craig as he left the Gamecock secondary shaking their heads. The Tigers were now 3-0 in the SEC. This team was quietly taking care of business and setting the stage for what could be a remarkable season. We're gonna come up and get a win today. Be 6-0, we gotta do what we gotta do, baby. The Louisiana Tech game loomed like a trap for the Auburn Tigers. This was a non-conference game, but an opponent the Tigers could not overlook. That's th this team's fighting for a bowl now, man. We gotta come out there and fight. I hope you know what we got, we're facing right here. A team that believes they can win, and a team that's fighting to get in the bowl, and they've got the style of play to do it. Now, if we are tense and ready to play, intense and ready to play, We'll take care of that. Yeah. Can we take it off? This day, the Tigers got Coach Bowden's message loud and clear. After giving up a touchdown on the opening drive of the game, Auburn rolled up 49 points, its highest point total of the year, in manhandling Louisiana Tech 49-13. After Craig. He's looking. He's looking. He's throwing. Goodson has it in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! Ty Goodson caught that one right at the goal line. Good for 23 yards and the score. Tyrone Goodson had his best day of the year, grabbing eight passes for 138 yards and two touchdowns. Damian Craig set an Auburn record by throwing for more than 300 yards in four consecutive games. While the team was executing the offense to perfection on the field, Coach Terry Bowden was meticulous in his play calls from the sidelines. All right, now what looks good? What are they doing, Jimbo? Is it three-man rush every time? R-47, R-47. R-47, they're, they're rolled up strong. Oh, the safety's over top. Safety's over top. Safety's over top. L over, L over, L over, L over 46. L over 46. Out here on the safety, tell him we'll score. That gum, that lemon, he'll miss. And we got we got, we got a block of everybody, I'm telling you. That's it. That's it. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. This day, Coach Bowden not only called the right plays, he unveiled a star of the future and running back to Montre Carter.
On a cold and rainy evening in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the Auburn Tigers did an old-fashioned gut check to see how much character this team really had. After a loss to Florida ended hopes for an undefeated season, it was important to refocus on winning the SEC West. Fortunately, the early rain did nothing to dampen the spirits of Auburn's defense. Jimmy Brumbaugh's bone-jarring hit and Marcus Washington's return of the ensuing fumble for an Auburn touchdown sent a message to the Razorbacks that Auburn would not be beaten this night. A 70-yard Damian Craig to Karsten Bailey touchdown pass, along with four Jared Holmes field goals, propelled Auburn to a commanding 26-7 fourth quarter lead. Although the Razorbacks scored late to make Auburn's final margin of victory a bit closer, the Tigers had done what they set out to do on the road at Fayetteville. Auburn's road to the SEC Championship nearly came to a dead end when the Tigers ran into Mississippi State. The Bulldogs would play one of their best games of the season. By the day's end, the Tigers had suffered a shocking loss and the entire season hung in the balance. Now, man, that's, that, that's, that's, that's real tough there. And we're going to have to dig real deep. We're going to have to dig real deep and find that team we had. We've got to go find that team we had. But, man, we're going to have to dig deep and find out what we're made of now because everything, as tough as it is, we still have our, we still have our destiny in our hands now. We still have our destiny in our hands. But now we got ourselves back to the wall. It was time to pick up the pieces and go back to work. In the next two weeks of preparation for the Georgia game, these young men would learn more about themselves and their character than most people learn in their entire lives. The country would see just how far they had come Saturday night in Athens. It's the oldest rivalry in the South and one of the most competitive in all of college football. In the 100 games of this series, Auburn has won just three more games than Georgia. The game in Athens this year promised to be one of the fiercest in the series history. Despite a Georgia touchdown on the first series of the game, the Tigers never flinched. In fact, they would dominate the entire first half Damian Craig came out red hot. Freshman DeMontre Carter ignored the pressure and drove the Bulldog defense nuts. Big Simmons is in the backfield, Kendall Simmons as the third runner, but the sneak by Craig, he lunges, he's in, touchdown! Tigers had just sent a message that they would not leave Athens without a victory. This team was living its motto, whatever is necessary, on every play. Rusty Williams only touched the ball twice all night, but he made them both count. His remarkable catch set up a 29-yard Jared Holmes field goal that gave the Tigers a lead they would never give up. Auburn had seized the momentum in this game and was pouring on the heat. At the 12, toss week, Carter running to the short side, gets outside, he's at the five, down the sideline, he's in, touchdown, Auburn! Devontae Carter, a run of 12 yards, off the toss week to 
the short side, and Auburn sprints out to a 16 to 7 lead. 13 27 left. In the... the Tigers were controlling the line of scrimmage and disrupting everything the Bulldogs threw at them. Senior Fred Beasley had asked for a bigger role in the final game against Georgia, and he made the most of it. Three tight ends, give up the middle, Beasley out of the eye, he stumbles, falls across the goal line, he's in, touchdown Auburn! He put his head down and just would not quit as he barreled into the end zone, and Auburn is up 23 to seven, a five yard burst by Fred Beasley. While the game remained close into the third quarter, the Tigers were just one big play from putting this game out of reach. Damien retreats the throw off the play fake. Sets up with time. Fires a pass. Over the middle. Bailey's got it. He breaks away at the 45-50. He's at the 40. The George the 30. The 20. He's in the foot race for the 10. The 5. He's gone. Touchdown Auburn! 76 yards. Breaking across the middle behind the defense. Karsten Bailey, the junior from Sharpsburg, Georgia. And Auburn has extended the lead to 30-14. He the Auburn offense was hitting on all cylinders this night. And the defense seemed to feed off the offensive fireworks. The Tigers had taken Athens by storm. Out of the ashes of the Mississippi State loss had risen the team closer and more committed than ever. They simply took it to another level. Special win for you, man. It's a special win and a special game. Seniors, I'm so proud for you and of you. Great job, seniors. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, appreciate you so much. It's one of the greatest, great games there is. You know what that game is with Georgia now. And that's a special one. It's very special. And, and I told you that we focused on this game. We go to Alabama now and we're 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 in contention. Yes. we we want that we want our goal for that conference championship. <laughs> And we got to go now. We got Alabama. We got it. We got the win, and we got it down to Alabama. We got it down to Alabama. I mean, I'm proud of it. And if you'll do the work you did these last two weeks, that'll be enough. That'll be enough. Well, you know, I'm a senior, and you know, they put in their hands. I asked for it, and they gave it to me. And, uh, and I thought I did a pretty good, good, good job for the team, and uh, it was a great victory for us. That's one thing uh, we focused on the entire two weeks, while the week that we had off. Just trying not to let the running game beat us. And uh, evidently, we did it, so we came out with the win. The biggest factor in the success of the Auburn offense in 1997 was the leadership of its seniors. Led by quarterback Damian Craig, this unit amassed nearly 4,000 yards of total offense. Offensive tackle Victor Riley provided a steadying force for a youthful and developing offensive line. At tight end, both Tyrone Dillard and Kevin McLeod contributed. At wide receiver number 89, Hicks Poor emerged as a clutch receiver in his senior season. And Tyrone Goodson became only the second receiver in Auburn history to have more than 2,000 career receiving yards. Fullback Fred Beasley made it his business to make the running game successful. 
He took the young backs under his wing and led by example. The man who made all the pieces fit was Damien Craig. There may never be another Auburn quarterback that can do all the things Damien did. He could pass in the pocket. Or while running at a full sprint. He spread the field with his running ability and often left defensive coordinators shaking their heads. He rewrote the Auburn record books, but more importantly, he would lead the Tigers back to a championship. As 85,000 plus fans prepared for the Auburn Alabama game, it was hard to imagine a game more exciting than the victory over Georgia a week ago. But as the Tiger walk began, the energy at Jordan Hare began to rise to that higher level reserved exclusively for this state championship game. In the rivalry that overshadows them all, nothing is more gratifying than to ruin the season for your opponent, to knock your rival out of a bowl bid or a championship. For Alabama, saddled with a losing record and confined to home for the holidays, a win over Auburn would ease a lot of the Crimson Tide pain. Still looking to win the SEC West, the Tigers have to win tonight to claim the division title. But the real prize is not championships, not bowl bids, Dragon rights are at stake here, and nothing is more important if you live in Alabama. That's really why we're here tonight. <laughs> On Alabama's first possession, the Auburn defense set the tone for the night. They would hit the tide hard every snap of the game. And let's get three and up, baby. Play some more. Butkus Award finalist Takeo Spikes kept the intensity level up. In all, Takeo and his faithful sidekick Ricky Neal would combine for 16 tackles on the night. On the Tigers' first offensive possession of the game, they quickly move into scoring position. But the drive stalled at the Bama six-yard line, and Jared Holmes with the sure three points on the board. With 2.23 left in the first quarter, Auburn moved into Alabama territory once again. But there, the tied defense held firm, and Jared Holmes added three points to the Auburn lead. Although the Tigers had moved the ball, it was obvious this game would not be a high-scoring affair. Defense would win this game in the end. Late in the second quarter, Alabama brought in Freddie Kitchens to give their offense a jump start. To the dismay of Coach Bowden, he did just that. Kitchens, motion by Jackson. Taking the snap, Freddie Kitchens pumps one over the middle. Touchdown, Alabama. Caught by Calvin Hall. By the time the game reached halftime, Alabama had scored twice to take a 10-6 lead. The Crimson Tide would extend their lead to 17-6 before the Tigers could regain some sense of momentum. They knew time was running out on the dream. 
High formation in the backfield. Craig, they're after him. Craig is going to throw to the far side. Dillard, he's got it at the 45. He's down the sideline at the 50 to the 40. Down the Alabama sidelines to the 30-yard line and out of bounds is Kevin McLeod. In a blink of an eye, the Tigers were knocking on the door. The Tigers had come too far to let Alabama ruin their dream. Craig under center, going to give it to Beasley, up and over, and in! Touchdown, Auburn! Craig Beasley went up and over the top, and Auburn has closed to within five at 17 to 12. Down by five, the Tigers entered the fourth quarter, where over the years, history has been made and hearts have been broken. A season of hard work had come down to 15 Here's a play fake by Damian Craig. Going to roll out on the bootleg, throwing on the run. Bailey got it with a flag on the play up at midfield. Damian Craig had the Auburn offense on the move again. Rusty Williams' catch moved the ball to the Alabama 14. Although Auburn fell to put it in the end zone, they got three more points off the toe of Jared Holmes to pull to within two with plenty of time left. On their next possession, the Tigers move the ball from their two yard line out to midfield. But there, the drive stalled. With 2.55 left, Coach Terry Bowden elected to punt the ball away. The weight of the Tigers' hopes and dreams fell on the shoulders of the Auburn defense. Somehow, they had to stop Alabama before the clock struck midnight. But the clock kept ticking. The game would be decided on third and eight. Kitchens in the shotgun. Third and about eight. Kitchens off the pump fake. Rolls to the left. Going to throw out in the flat. And the receiver's hit and lost the ball. It's Auburn got the fumble, Auburn's I believe. Got Auburn's, Auburn's got, got it. it at the Alabama 32 or 3. Martavius Houston made the hit, and Quentin Reese recovered the fumble that gave Auburn new life. A pass to Hicks Poor moved the ball to the Alabama 22 and set the stage for Jared Holmes to make history. Stills will hold. Brent Turner is the snapper. Ball at the left hash mark. There's the snap. The spot. Kick is away. Long enough. High enough. Kick. Good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! Holmes from 39 yards. It's good! It's good! A mob scene. 15 seconds to go. Auburn has gone ahead. 18-17 over Alabama. Pandemonium reigned at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Alabama only had time left for a futile desperation field goal try. Got the ball at the left hash mark. 57-yard try. Goss puts it down. He kicks it. It is going to be short. It's no good. Ball game is over. Ladies and gentlemen, the Auburn Tigers are going to the SEC championship game. Hail to the champions of the SEC Western Division. The Auburn Tigers, 18. The Alabama Crimson Tide, 17. Hang a star next to Jared Holmes' name. Jared Holmes has given Auburn the SEC Western Division Championship. Listen up now, take it in, listen up, man. Fellas, I mean, I mean, we just, you gotta look at everybody on this one. You gotta look at everybody, and the fellas, 
It takes wins like that to make a great season. You're going to be with us. This is one of the years now, one of the games that puts you in that museum, that puts you in there with all the great games that Auburn's ever played. And yeah, I guess it's the ones that are most Im improbable, where a team that's a champion comes back and proves they can do it. Everybody, nobody quits. Everybody believes they're going to find a way. And it comes back and helps. The fumble recovery. We kept missing things, and boom, you never gave up. And uh, this one's special. This one's special. I just took the two timeouts to take a time and visualize what the ball was going. You know, I visualized it the whole time, going right down the middle. You know, I prayed to God this whole game. You know, he's helped both teams, you know, and he was with me all night tonight. You know, and it, it can't get any better than this. It had been a long road for this team with plenty of bumps along the way. But during the course of this year, they learned what Auburn character was all about, what Auburn pride was all about. And they joined an elite group of Auburn players who for the rest of their lives can be called champions.